Canelo and Jaime Munguia uh, was announced. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted it to be David Benavidez, but if you look at it, you, to take that aside and you look at Jaime Munguia, Jaime Munguia is going to come to fight. He's going to give him a good fight. You know, given that, though, there was a lot of uh, maybe misinformation, bad narratives that Canelo left PBC and, and all that stuff. What do you make of all the information that was put out there with PBC's running out of money, that they're going out of business? <laughs> I know you've been hearing it for years also. Yeah, you just got to take it from the source. Where Whoever's putting this information out, let's take it from the source. I mean, we're running a business. Running a business and making the biggest fights that are possible in the entire sports. PBC has been putting on the biggest fights for quite some time. And that's what the focus is. Really, to, to be honest, I don't really pay any of that stuff any attention. You know, I have a fun once in a while going on Twitter. Oh, you get wild on Twitter yeah, sometimes, man. Yeah, just I, I like to have fun back and forth with some of the fans. Um, but when you're running a business at the highest level, you don't really have time to really think about people who've never, ever done anything in boxing, much less talk about it at the highest level. Mm. So you don't really kind of give it that kind of energy where, you, where it consumes you. People are going to say what they want to say. They're entitled to your opinion, and it really doesn't matter. We're on to the next. Given this fight, how, how do you see it with Jaime? Does Jaime have a, a, a good shot uh, at uh, beating Canelo? No. No, not no. at all? No, he's getting knocked out. He's getting knocked out? He's getting knocked out. Damn, all right. <laughs> how do yeah. you see it? No doubt in my mind. Yeah? Canelo has way too much experience for him. Um, he's never seen nothing like that. He has one or two, I guess, good wins. Who did he beat? That's a good point. Well, the last fight, Ryder, people, I think that's what kind of helped his case to get the fight because he, he dispatched of Ryder in a way that Canelo couldn't. He stopped him, and he went 12 rounds with Canelo. But look, Dervinchenko, Dervinchenko almost had him out. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a solid fighter. I mean, just think about this. Three fights ago, were we even talking about this? We would have probably been kind of, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's like he's, I give uh, him and Roach a lot of credit. You know, they've been doing exactly what they need to do to put themselves in a position like this. And so you, you got to give them credit for stepping up. It's a, it's a huge, huge fight for the Mexican fan base. Um, they're really, really going to be riled up. I'm really looking forward to that. Two Mexicans going at it on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great fight for as long as it lasts. For you being there um, on Tuesday, and I know Oscar did an interview with us where he said some things that at the beginning the negotiation was a little difficult. Are you guys at a point where you can work with like a golden boy and, and despite the past, you guys can set aside it and make these fights happen. Well, you, that was always the case. Yeah. yeah. If a fight makes sense, you can make the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, Oscar's just a clown, and, and everyone knows that, and that's why nobody deals with him. Eric got enough, the utmost respect for him. He's a, he's a trooper. He's a soldier. He's very knowledgeable. He's been running the company for, for a number of years um, since Schaefer's been gone. Um, yeah. It seemed like Canelo was a little bothered that like Oscar was even on stage. Like I, I, I noticed that and I asked him and he's like, I don't like him. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I feel Why it. would he like him? Why why would he like him? Mm. He's a great fighter, but he's a horrible, horrible person. Mm. Is why? Uh, fans watching this would be like, Oh, why does Leonard feel this way? Like I, I've been covering the sport, I know the relationship, but they're gonna be History asking. history will tell you everything you need to know about him. Mm. Everything is I, 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 me, me, me. Look what I done. Look what I did. Look what I did. You ain't did shit. You ain't did shit. Mm. I props to his company. They've um, been involved in some big fights. But him personally, you know, he wants to take all the credit for everything. 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 Great fighter, but a horrible, horrible person. The idea of a Canelo Benavides fight, you knowing how the business of boxing works. Canelo made a comment that, hey, if someone offers me 150, 200 million, I'll take the fight the neck, like, as soon as possible. I don't know, it, it, on one side, it got me thinking, is he trying to build this up like like your man Floyd and, and, and Manny to a point where like this this fight is, is so big now that it has to happen, or is, is it something else? You with perspective, how do you see that situation? Well, one thing I do know 
is that Canelo and Eddie Reynoso are very, very smart, savvy businessmen. Well, they learn from you guys. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, he knows what he's doing. And I can tell the fans, look into the camera and tell the fans, Canelo Alvarez is not scared of David Benavidez. That's not true. That's not true. No matter what the perception looks like, that man ain't scared. The fighters fight. Again, he, know what he, he knows what he's doing. Mm. Again, is that I think when they fight, I think when they fight, it's going to be a terrific fight. Mm. It's going At that point in time, it'll be the biggest fight in all of boxing. So you're confident it does happen? I wouldn't say confident, but I think it happens. I think it happens. So in, in your position from a, a business perspective, why hasn't it happened now? Do you think if we wait a little bit longer, it can get to a, a higher monetary value? Do you think that's really what it is? Well, with these kind of fights at this level, it's just patience. Mm. And I know everybody wants everything right now, and it should have happened. I mean, you know, I've – see – I've seen this movie before. I know. You know, things don't happen when the media and the fans want them to happen for a number of reasons. Um, and actually, I was reading something. I don't know if it was on your site where someone was saying something about along the lines of um, Canelo might have felt disrespected or something. I don't know because I really don't know the backstory on the back and forth with them. I, yeah, people have said that, that maybe that's a reason because... Uh, They've been a little aggressive on the Benavides side where like he feels like, hey, I don't owe you guys anything, you know, and the way they've gone about getting the fight. Well, David Benavides and his promoter are, are very good people. Um, I think it's more the dad because Dave, David's David's been for the most part respectful. But, you know, Jose, Jose's trying to get the fight. Well, and again, it's, it's, if that's if that's their approach. I, I know firsthand, this is my thought process on that, is that when you disrespect, you get no check. And I'm not saying that that's what happened, but I, I know from my perspective, if I'm disrespectful, they're not eating at this table. If I got any say-so about it, that's not going to happen. It's just you got to learn how to be respectful. We had to learn the hard way coming up. And I'll say this, you know, Floyd's approach initially when we fought Oscar, when he fought Oscar, uh, it was a little different approach. And then we had a conversation, and he switched the approach up, and he got to fight. How was the approach? I don't want to go into details about, you know, how we, what we do, but sometimes you just got to, you know, you got to unleash all of that frustration and whatever when you get to fight. But... If a guy at Canelo's level, he's at the highest level in boxing. You got to find a way to, to get him in the ring. Disrespecting him, if that happened, ain't nobody going to put no pressure on him. He don't give a f*** what y'all think. And I don't blame him at the end of the day. Here's a man that's made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, he's fought everybody. He's fought everybody. And... To tap into his mindset maybe for a second without having a conversation with him, never had a conversation with him about any of this, is that at the, at the end of the day, when you look at Benavidez, he kind of needs him and not the other way around. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know how to play the game. As, that's what I'm saying. But, again, I don't know if that is the scenario. I kind of read that somewhere about – about some disrespect, but that I my thought process is like that. I know Floyd's is the same way too. When you're disrespectful, you ain't getting no check. Why are we gonna put you on? You know, there was a scenario with something like that with uh, with Margarita and Bob Arum at one point, where it was like, no, we we were we were we had split. And there was, all, there was some noise being made about fighting him. And it was like, oh, he's scared to fight him. Scared to fight him for what? He's slow, flat-footed. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we had just split with Aaron. And Aaron was out there saying, oh, call him Floyd the chicken. And, yeah, okay, well, guess what? You ain't getting this fight. And that's how it goes. 
Bob was at that point, and this was old news. He was very disrespectful, saying a lot of disrespectful things. It's okay. We're gonna show you better than we can tell you. 